this is a very strange debate. It's, 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 uh, you know, I, I remember during the Gulf War trying to trying to stop George Bush from from, from convincing us all to go and, and march <laughs> and march off to war. And the trouble was is that every time you deconstructed one lie, five more lies would be told. And and the numbers that throw that are being thrown around with, with this debate are just bizarre. For example, you heard him say that the investment is two, the three to four billion dollars, but the job number stays constant. Think about it for a moment. Investment may be $2 billion, or $3 billion, or $4 billion, but the job number always stays the same at 10000 That's really, you know, I, I guess the choice is how much gold do you put on the toilet seat? Right? Because, because the, the numbers that get thrown out here are just corporate pornography. They're, they're, they, they are not worth the paper they're printed on. Yet when you do start to drill into them, they tell a very different story. For example, one slot machine in order to, to make its profit back to the province so that you can have all the wonderful things like hospitals and schools and transit systems, one slot machine requires 13.6 carb movements per day. That's the industry number that the industry uses as it models at its casinos. So for every slot machine they want to put in the city, you're going to generate 13.6 carb movements per day. Now, let's put that into context because the casino they're talking about here is not a casino. This is a mega casino for the mega city brought to you by the person who brought you the mega city, Paul Godfrey. Who, by the way, I agree with him when he says he doesn't want one in his neighborhood. I don't want one in my neighborhood either. We're agreed on something. But the mega casino they're now proposing is for 5,000 slot machines and 325 card tables with about six stools per card table. To make that work, to make that work, According to the industry, these aren't my numbers, so I'll keep going back to their numbers. And unless they're not telling us the truth, which might be a possibility, these are the numbers they're using as they try to seduce us with this, this, this promise of jobs. They need 11,000 car parking spaces. The MGM proposal is called for 12,000. Jerry Spratton's called for 13,000. But it's about 11,000 car spaces are required. To build a parking spot in this city, to build it, unless you're going to do surface parking lot, in which case you need about 143 acres of parking. To give you an idea of how much parking is required, if you think of Yorkdale Shopping Center, that on Boxing Day backs up to the 401 all the way to Young Street, all the way to 400, that's only 7,400 parking spots, and they have a parking garage. You have to add Sherway Gardens and Yorkdale together to get 1,100 parking spots. But to build 1,100 parking spots down on the waterfront, the other waterfront Toronto, has said, based on the bedrock, and where the lake fill is, and the cost of building, the current cost of building an underground parking lot right now, it's about $50,000 a parking spot down to Portland's. The same if you're going to do it at, at, uh, at the c &E. And Oxford Properties that's costed out its proposal on Front Street has just said not to build any parking. We'll use all the existing parking in the downtown. You can, you can figure it out later, Toronto. But the 2,400 spots barely are, are the are code requirement for the office building they have on site, let alone the 490-story towers. But if you build 11,000 parking spots, the cost of that project is $1 billion. The first billion dollars this casino makes is going to have to pay off not the price tag on a new transit system in Toronto, not the price tag for a new hospital, new schools, not the price tag for anything that would also employ carpenters. What it will be is a billion dollars for a parking garage in Toronto's waterfront. That's the size of the casino we're talking about. The size of the casino that's being proposed for downtown Toronto is the equivalent in capacity to all seven casinos that are in Vancouver right now. All seven casinos being stacked one on top of another. This is not a small little room like this with some poker machines. This is seven and a half football fields. Seven and a half football fields full of poker machines and card tables. It's too big for the city. Period. Whether it makes money, whether it brings jobs, whether it does any of that, you cannot physically fit this into the downtown core without entirely reprogramming your downtown core to accommodate this. Now, if you look at Sheridan's, Showway Gardens, and Yorkdale, what you'll see is two fantastically big parking lots with direct access to two major highways and with transit stations built right into the project. None of the places they want to build this casino actually facilitate that kind of transportation infrastructure. No one's talking about the infrastructure cost. The MGM says they'll talk about this in the province, and the province may talk to this about the city, but there'll be no special deal for Toronto. But we're going to have to take all the transit dollars and all the transportation dollars 
that it required, the $500 million required to rebuild the gardener, you get to do that plus build new on-ramps to the gardener. We don't need this kind of transportation transformation of the downtown core, although there would be a lot of jobs attached to that, just like there were a lot of jobs attached to the Sprague Expressway, another one of Paul Godfrey's ideas, that the carpenters union supported, that the labor union supported, that would have destroyed this restaurant and the rest of this neighborhood. Sometimes, no matter how many jobs they're attached to a good idea, it remains a bad idea because the social, political, and cultural impact would devastate a city. A casino would devastate Toronto. But getting away from all of those figures and just talking about this casino model, the promise to Toronto has been until last week that we were going to get $100 million. The mayor said $200 million. The city's report from Ernst & Young, with figures supplied by my friend here, said $168 million in hosting fees. Then the OLG said closer to $50 to $100 million. Then the premier said, what if you do the same formula for all the cities in Ontario the same? You don't treat Toronto differently. They said, about $25 million. What? About $25 million, maybe. But to get to $25 million off this casino is still a stretch. Because the models that they're using around projecting all the money that will flow to Toronto are also not consistent with industry standards. They'll point to Niagara and say, look at the slot machines in Niagara, give you 600 bucks a win position on a daily basis, and that's the profit that accrues back to the problems. And after you pay off the cocktail waitresses, and after you pay off the cleaners, and after you pay off the parking attendants, and after you pay off security, and after you pay off these people with the 3,000 or 4,000 or 6,000, however many jobs it is that are going to be a permanent part of this casino. We say after you do all that, and actually the casino numbers are actually a lot smaller than that. What they're actually talking about are jobs in a shopping mall, jobs in a hotel, and jobs in a convention center that have nothing to do with the casino. They could all arrive without a casino and probably will arrive without a casino. But even after you do all this, you've got to take a look at the numbers. There are no slot machines across North America that make $600 a day except for the ones that were in Niagara Falls when it first opened. Those win positions are dropping as the number of slot machines in the region go up. Supply and demand. The more slot machines you have, the less money they make. The more you put into a facility, the lower the profit margin on them. And so if you take a look at Chicago, which has 15,000 slot machines in the Chicago land area and 10 casinos, and you take a look at the revenue generated from that, they generate about $2 billion a year in, in, in gross revenues from 15,000 slot machines. The projections from OLG and from the gaming industry are that we'll make $1.4 billion off of 5,000 slot machines. It doesn't add up, and, it, and it's an extraordinarily over, overly rosy estimate. If we make what Vancouver's casinos make, which are seven casinos with about 5,000 slot machines and about 300 card tables, which is exactly the configuration promised for Toronto, the revenues in Vancouver at a high point went to about $800 million, but now we're dropping down to $700 million as surrounding communities start to add new slot machines, new gaming facilities, electronic bingo, border casinos, and, and the market gets further and further diluted. The revenues that are possible on this, if it's $700 million, are half of what they're being projected as. And that's why the hosting fee has dropped from Ford's 200 to 168 to 50 to 100 to about $25 million, with OLG now trying to rejig the hosting fee to get it back up again to try to seduce us with their own money. But even if we could get to the $25 million, we would still, with a casino of this size, require 11,000 people, 16 hours a day, seven days a week gambling, at full tilt, otherwise our hosting fee would drop even further. And so the question in front of us all is whether we're going to be seduced by these fake numbers, or we're going to ask people to do real peer-reviewed numbers, and not by the gaming industry, and not by consultants hired by the gaming industry, but have some real due diligence done on the projections that are being put in front of us. Because when, as a politician, and when as a reporter, I heard two to four billion dollars, and there's a two billion dollar swing on a business model that doesn't change on those projections, but they're not sure whether it's two or four billion dollars to build 5,000 slot machines and the convention center and all this other stuff. When you hear that swing, you think, wow, where's the two billion dollar margin of error? Where is it? And when you hear 10,000 jobs, lots of, lots of now nice little round numbers, you ask, what are those 10,000 jobs? And when you look at the casino industry across North America, what you see is MGM lost 1.8 billion dollars last year. They went into Vegas promising 10,000 jobs on a $9 billion investment at City Center and had to collapse it and blow up the hotel because they couldn't finance it. When you take a look at Atlantic City where they're laying people off hand over fist as we speak, and they want to blame it on Sandy except it started two years before Sandy arrived. When you take a look at all of these things where the casino industry is refusing to employ people now in the United States beyond two years so they don't have to pension them and don't have to benefit them out, none of the numbers stand up to any of the scrutiny. And if the numbers don't stand up to the scrutiny, we should not be seduced by them. 
And when it comes to the pretty pictures that are being flown around the city, remember this. For about 50 bucks, you can send off a file to India nowadays and come back with a casino anywhere you want in Toronto. That's how architectural rendering is done in the city now. They're not even hiring local architectural renderers to do their drawings anymore. Those jobs are being shipped offshore. If you want to build a real city, I'm here to talk. If you want to build a casino, you're not interested. And when you talk about Barcelona, that far corner of the beach, where you can look down the beach and see the golden goldfish that Frank Gehry built, and you go to the one piece of stucco architecture that sticks out in Barcelona because of this ugliness, what you find is an empty shopping center right now because nobody goes to that corner of the city except to gamble. Nobody does. It's killed that corner of the city. And a good friend of mine, who's a news director at a radio station in Barcelona, when they heard that Toronto was considering this, they said, whatever you do, come to Barcelona and study the impact. <coughs> nobody from outside Barcelona goes to that casino. This is in Montreal. Nobody from outside Montreal goes to that, that casino to, to gamble. 93% of the money comes to the local economy. Just like in, in, in Detroit, where, where they projected 7 million tourists and only got 2 million tourists, they all come from Windsor, can beat the lower dollar and get better tax rates. On it. None of the numbers stand up to any of the scrutiny. And because they don't stand up to the scrutiny, we shouldn't believe them. And if you don't believe the numbers, you can't vote for a casino. <laughs>